Hello and welcome to Cutter Farms. We're back with another episode of Edgewater, Saskatchewan, and today we're moving a little bit of equipment around. I'm going to get this uh, versatile fired up here, and I wanted to just uh, take this thing up and get it parked in the shop since we are done planting. One interesting thing before we get started here, uh, BC Bueller reached out to me after uh, one of my previous episodes here, and I was talking about how the steering wheel was blocking the console, and it turns out I can hold the uh, right mouse button down here and change the position so I can actually uh, see my gauges and everything depending on my field of view settings and everything else. And in addition to that, if you uh, look just to the right of the steering wheel on the dash there, there's a little dial and I can click that with the left mouse button and change the readout here so I can get engine hours and uh, fuel readouts and the clock and so there's a, a lot of different settings over here which is a really cool I thought uh, so I appreciate BC Bueller reaching out and showing me that we've got all kinds of stuff there which is gonna take me one step closer here to being able to do things in cab and be more realistic over time so as you can see this is uh, so much nicer being able to actually see what we've got going on down here now I think I've got engine hours right now if I tick this to the left now I've got speed which is awesome it is uh, as usual in uh, kilometers an hour here right now I think but I'm pretty sure that if I had the real dashboard mod installed that I could uh, get that to switch out to miles per hour. Um, I think Perma's modding had, uh, had that wired up to automatically change all the dash uh, speeds as well to match up with uh, miles per hour. So I might have to get that reinstalled now that I have a reason to be in cap again. But we're going to get this parked in the shed. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited about uh, being able to do more in cab work. However, uh, next up here, we are going to be getting into a, a bit of spring. Now, we left off last time uh, putting all of our seed into the ground here. I don't think any of the new fields have come up, but we do have a number of the other fields that have already started uh, sprouting up here. So I think what we might do is go ahead and jump in the sprayer and hit a few of the fields that we have already got some weeds in and then we'll move the time forward and get caught up with the rest of the jobs. Uh, the one thing left that I had to do on this piece of equipment though was swap out the tires. We need the uh, smaller tires for spraying in standing crops. We don't want to be running with these big floaters on so I'm going to back this thing into the shed here real quick and we'll get that switched out. All right, I think we've got the tires all swapped out now. Uh, let's see, did I remember to update the monitor? We did, so I've got the uh, spraying monitor in here, and we should be all good to go. I've got a little bit of herbicide loaded up. I don't think we're going to need a ton of it. And so we're going to head out here. I think I've got two fields that need spraying. So I'm going to swing around, and we're going to hit this one that's just, uh, I think that's north of the farm here and see how fast we can get through that. This sprayer is absolutely uh, ginormous, so it doesn't take very long for us to knock these jobs out. And I do love that this thing is gonna go a whopping 33 miles an hour as we're flying down the roads here. Oh, gotta watch for that traffic. All right, here we are. The field entrance is right off of this gravel road, so I always have a tendency to not leave myself enough space to turn in right away so we're gonna try and do a better job of that this time and right down into the field perfect uh, I think we're gonna go around to the right so let's see if I can go ahead and get this unfolded without crashing into that telephone pole I always underestimate the size of this boom. Perfect. And now if I can... lower this down a bit, maybe just above the fence line, I'll save me some headaches later and then we should have uh, widened our stance out as we pulled into here. I think that'll work out good. Awesome. 
Now, let's see if we can fire this thing up. We should have spot spraying enabled on this sprayer, so we'll hit only what we need to. And I've missed that corner already. We're not even getting going here, and I'm missing weeds all over the place. All right, we'll call this the actual start. We got squared up on the fence there, more or less. Let's get going. I do miss the... Um, oh, I can control the booms individually. I was going to say, I do miss the uh, automatic height controls on that John Deere that we've been using on uh, the UMRV save. The fact that the booms go up and down and kind of follow the height of the land is epic. It works out really nice because I'm really bad at uh, keeping my eye on the booms. And the hillier the terrain you get, it uh, helps out a lot more. Um, now, UMRV has a lot more hills on it than we do here. And thankfully, our precision farming is saving us from spraying in the creek here. This uh, precision farming spot spraying uh, stuff works out really well for us so we can manage to get through some of these uh, bits without worrying about wasting product or putting too much product onto parts of the field, which is awesome. And what I'm really loving about this sprayer the most, I know this is the, I think this is the second year we've sprayed with this, is just how quickly we can knock out the acres. Uh, for whatever reason, spraying is one of those jobs that I really don't mind as long as I'm in a large scale sprayer. I just don't, uh, I don't like doing it when it's a small swath and it, I feel like it's hard to figure out where you're supposed to spray next. Uh, because you can only base that on the uh, whether or not the weeds are showing up as dead behind you. And with precision farming, they're scattered. It's not like it's a solid field of weeds. And so we've got to kind of spend a little bit more energy figuring that out. We're getting real close to some of these telephone poles, but we're going to make it. I need a uh, actual breakaway boom on the end of my sprayer in farm sim so that when I tap into something it uh, just springs back. That would help me out a lot I think. But once we get this initial headland pass uh, knocked out it's not too bad. I think if I was to try and spray in real life I'd never be able to do it. These booms are just too big for me. And we're just gonna, I think, follow this back around. This is a very unorthodox way to probably spray this field, but I'm most interested in just knocking it out as quickly as possible here. We'll let the computer uh, keep track of which parts of the field have already been sprayed versus not. In real life, I suppose I would have a uh, computer readout showing me exactly which rows I'd already sprayed in and uh, line me up on my next pass, which would make this a lot easier. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't quite got there in farm sim technology. Uh, I know with precision farming, when I'm spreading fertilizer and or uh, harvesting, that will uh, get displayed on the mini map and kind of show your swap, the part of the field that you've already affected. Uh, something like that getting moved in to an in-cab monitor would be absolutely epic. That's, I think, for me, the next big evolution of realism in farm sim would be to see the uh, map in the lower left-hand corner with the information that Precision Farming provides brought in onto uh, one of these actual monitors in-cab. Now, I'm folding up this boom. I'm probably driving way too fast for uh, folding this up on the go. But we're in a hurry today. We want to get uh, get going and get over to our other field, which I think is the field right across from the farm that still needed to be uh, sprayed before we move the clock forward. And possibly this field across the road. I can't remember what order we did things in. Uh, th there's a field on the right up here that we drilled. But I think we did that towards the end of the ground. Looks uh, kind of brown over there, so I don't think the crops have quite popped up in that field yet yeah it looks like that's still got a uh, few weeks to go here still so i'm gonna spin on over into uh the other field that we've got ready and we'll get that sprayed up here real quick oh man look at all the weeds out there that's uh that's gonna need to get sprayed for sure uh let's see here luckily this field is a little bit more open at the entrance at least so i should be able to 
get unfolded a bit uh, smoother. All right, I think what we're gonna do is uh, spray with the left side here this time, just because I'm already lined up pretty straight. And man, this thing is gonna fly while spraying. I'm not sure I can uh, handle 20 miles an hour by the uh, branches here from in cab. It's impossible for me to tell how far I am there. I am over the edge though, looking good. I was doing better than I thought I was doing, but my confidence level is low. We've got to ease into these situations. And I'm not sure, catching a little bit of a branch there, how to get this corner done. So we're going to just uh, swing in like that, and then we're going to swing our way back out. Whoops. And let's see if we cleared. We did. Awesome. Looking good, looking good. Um, yeah, let's just continue around. I think we'll uh, come back and do the individual sections. Maybe before we leave the back 40 here, I'll uh, finish it off or something along those lines. It's always confusing for me how to do this field when we've got uh, that little narrow part to get into the back section here. There's just not enough room to turn this a big monster of a sprayer around in here. That's okay. And we'll just uh, continue around into these uh, squirrely bits. See if we can knock out this whole back section in a single pass just about. It feels like we'll be close to that at least. I think I'm missing just a couple of weeds along that outside edge there. We're going to back up and make sure we've hit those. Plus, I wasn't sure I had turned quite wide enough to avoid this one little tree here. There's a few of these trees that are still kind of in the way. They're, they look nice decoratively, but when I came back out here and kind of widened the field out and cleaned up the edges, I would kind of, whoa, wish that we'd uh, taken out a couple more of these trees just to make farming incredibly easy, not mostly easy, but then I wouldn't be pushing myself to kind of improve my uh, driving capabilities and such. So I think we're going to leave them there. I don't think I'm going to make any more uh, field modifications to these fields. And oops, speaking of my driving capabilities, we're going to keep working on those. Now this back section ought to be very interesting. It's barely one boom wide, so finding the room to actually turn around is suspect. Nope, I don't think I'm going to make that, so backing up it is. Yeah, I should do this with the uh, face cam on uh, slash, you know, the steering wheel cam and whatnot, just so you guys can see how incredibly uh, tense I am trying to steer this thing and not crash into anything. The concentration levels are real here. It might help if I wasn't driving it like a go-kart, I suppose. Um, it does go 22 miles an hour for spraying, which seems incredibly fast. Uh, I don't think I ever sprayed much above, like, maybe 15 uh, when I was working on the farm, but that was a very a different uh, spraying setup. I've never had the opportunity to actually drive one of these big self-propelled sprayers. I've seen one a couple of times, but never got the chance to jump in and uh, take one for a spin myself. So I'm going to fold this up. We got this one little field right across the road here that we need to jump into next. And this one's got two driveways, but I think I'm going to go to the one uh, down here to my right uh, so that we can uh, be lined up square against that fence line. And we'll, uh, we'll make an attempt to go counterclockwise around this field. I think that's going to make for the easiest time here. Once again, I have to be uh, conscious of the telephone poles. Oh, we just clipped that one. My ability to determine depth on some of these things is just not there. I, you'd think I'd get better after uh, doing it a few times today, but every time we've unfolded this thing just about, I think we've crashed the boom into something. I think I always fail to remember that the uh, with the boom on the back, when I steer, it's going to swing out kind of a, a little bit. I think that's what's uh, getting me more than anything. 
And there we go. Okay, so one time around the field, we've got the bulk of it. I am going to have to do uh, just one pass in the middle here, it looks like. Because so I can see dead weeds to my left and my right. Perfect. I was worried I was going to have the smallest strip I was going to have to come back and hit. But apparently not. This field is uh, perfectly sized for this. And it's going to leave me right up by the farm yard entrance, which I can't complain about at all. So I've got this field to my right here, uh, the other field over on the other side of the farm here, and then the one way across the road left to hit. So we've got uh, half of our spraying done now. Three fields out of six. Not too shabby. Well, let's bring this back up into the yard. We've still got tons of product left in the tank. We're not uh, going through that herbicide nearly as uh, quick as I expected, which is good. We won't have to make a product run today. Um, let's see. All right, so we're in May. We've got a lot of crops in the bins still. Uh, that one's got peas. We got some lentils. The other two should be empty. Yep. And then I forget what this is over here, but it's peas or lentils, one of the two peas. If I just take a quick look here, uh, I don't think the peas in the bag are showing up in this list, but it looks like July is our month to sell on these typically. So I've got some time to move the clock forward. And if we just take a quick look at the map here, uh, it is indeed one, two, uh, three fields left. We just sprayed these two, so or those three. Yeah, we're good to go. Let's move the clock forward. All right, we've moved forward into June here, and you can see our other fields are now popping up. We've got the canola here, and quite a bit of uh, weeds already out here. So we might as well hop back into our sprayer here and get those knocked out right quick. And that's going to leave us set up in a good position to start uh, prepping for hauling our products up to the uh, elevator in the next few weeks here. All right, I've gone ahead and just knocked this field out. I figure uh, we already went through three of them, so rather than forcing y'all to watch me uh, knock out the rest of these fields in the same manner, I'm just going to hit these other two real quick off camera and we'll jump back into things and look into hauling all the grain up to the elevator. Uh, actually, I guess it's not grain, the peas and the lentils, but we'll get the rest of our crops hauled up to the elevator here uh, in just a minute. We've got one of three fields done. The rest of these aren't gonna take very long with this sprayer and we'll catch you in just a bit. All right, well, we have uh, taken the headlands off on this field already, or taken them off. We've sprayed the headlands on this field already, and that leaves us with a few rows. This is actually a large enough field that I felt we could use a GPS track to knock it out. So that just shows how much larger this field is than some of the others we've already sprayed. Uh, it's kind of cool to actually feel justified in turning the GPS on for the first time and uh, having a reason to go in up and down rows here. So we'll be uh, knocking this out. We've got just a few passes with a uh, big sprayer like this still though. Yeah, this has gone a lot faster than I thought it was going to when we kick things off today. Uh, I do think maybe I should uh, consider doing a little bit of uh, custom spraying for the nearby farmers after we get all of our stuff sold here if there's any spraying contracts left that is uh, because we could knock them out pretty quick although i don't necessarily want to invest in a bunch more chemical we've got a couple hundred gallons left here maybe if i grabbed like one smaller contract uh we would use up what we've got left i think i'm going to end up with about 10 percent of our uh, capacity left and that's been you know about enough to hit one of these bigger fields or medium-sized fields this one's taken maybe closer to 15 percent of a tank to spray but most of the other ones i think i got done for about 10 percent of the tank i want to say we started somewhere well maybe we started the day off at 30 something man i can't even remember either way we're doing good here we're definitely going to have enough product left for uh this field 
and I'm looking forward to getting the truck filled up with some of our crops here and getting those sold. So let me wrap up the last pass here and we'll meet you back up in the yard. As expected, we ended up with 11% left here in the tank, which is going to be enough to hit up at least one other field, maybe a couple. So for now, we're going to leave this sprayer all attached. I'm going to put it right back in the shed here and we'll look into that just a little bit later. We're into June now. Let's check on our crop prices. It looks like we're getting close here on our versus our max price, but we're not quite there. Obviously, selling on the train is going to be the way to go. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and bump the time forward here into July and we'll see what our prices look like. All right, I have moved my time forward just one day into later June, and it looks like we're beating out the price on both of these. And peas is already starting to come back down. So I think we're going to go ahead and sell the peas here and see what we can get. Now, I know we just looked at this a little bit ago, but uh, what's in here? This is my ag bag. Yes, I know. Peas. We've got peas in here as well. So I'm going to need to figure out how to get all these peas moving into a semi truck as quickly as possible so let's get this auger going i think we'll hook up to the bin first and then i will uh hopefully get auto drive to drive that truck up to the cell point and then we can figure out how to get this ag bagger uh taken apart and unload the crops that are in there should be quite interesting this thing steers it with the steering wheel, actually. I was trying to figure out why it had a, a small drift to the side because my steering wheel was turned. Very interesting. All right, I was almost positive this was the one that had the peas in it, but I was wrong. I was wrong. Lentils, peas. Oh, look at that. Well, we spent all that time lining it up for nothing. Let's go ahead and get this thing moved down here to the correct bin this time. There we are. All right, that should work. We'll get our trusty a semi truck all ready to go here. And this is the moment where I was really hoping that we didn't leave a bunch of stuff inside of it. Now, I've updated this truck on UMRV. I'm not sure that I updated it here on this save. I did, so we have the improved sounds on the uh, Kenworth here. Awesome truck by Northwest Mods and Edits. See if I can actually get this thing under the auger. There we are. Now, I don't know how many trips this is going to take to empty out this bin. 130,000 liters sounds like about two semi loads, maybe? I can't recall. We'll find out in a minute, though. Volume wise, these bins don't look that big compared to my semi trailer, so I can't imagine it's more than two loads. There's the front hopper. Let's see if I can get the back hopper. I think there was 130,000 in there. So if we do this again, oh, that was 30,000 in the front hopper. So I'm guessing this is going to be about 30,000 in the back hopper. So that's 60, yeah, just over two loads. Plus we've got a little over a load in the bag then as well. I'm really hoping I can just back this auger right into the front of the bag and have it... Uh, unload into the trailer. If I have to scoop it out with the skid steer, that's gonna take a minute. There we go. And I need to figure out how to bring this up to the train yard. Um, I don't have a train yard set up. How is that possible? We've been selling all of our grain at the train yard. Well, I guess we're going to be driving this up there ourselves for the first load and seeing about setting that up real quick. I love the uh, sounds in the interior on this thing, but man, do I need to uh, go in and dial the volume down. I am getting just blasted in here. All right, let's see if we can figure out how we've got this all set up now. I don't see an auto drive course that would go to where I think think it should go so I'm going to jump us out external we're gonna see if we can figure out how to make one here I think what I'm gonna do is have it go around the back and come out through the train dump 
and then we can go straight and around that shed on the way back. So let's see here. I think the train dump is the one on the inside. So if I continue my course from this point right here, we might have to do a little bit of cleanup, but... Oh, that's nowhere near tight enough. Well, I think what we're going to do is uh, we'll dump what we've got first and then we'll uh, come back around because I don't think I can back this big double trailer up. In hindsight, I could have run all of my crops up into the train storage in the previous uh, weeks and then been ready to just grab the train and uh, sell the crops right away when they price was available. I don't think it cost me anything to put the crops in here. We definitely didn't think about that. Either way, we it did what we did, so now we're going to uh, drive through here, kind of uh, take it for a trial run, I guess, to make sure we don't run into any more problems that we don't think about before we try to record this uh, course again. And then we'll just, uh, normally I'd swing wide that way and swing out to the right. We're going to swing back to the left, though, and take a second pass at recording this sell point here. Or a delivery point, I suppose, since we're not actually selling anything. And one other thing that I need to do is clean up this point here. There we go. Now, I think... This one is in a good spot if I can get lined up more or less straight how I would be if I had actually done this turn. And we're going to hit record. And I'm going to turn as tight as I can here. I do want to straighten that out though before I forget about it. And we've got plenty of room on this ramp, I think, for those trailers to straighten out without hitting that stair. There we go. And I'm going to drive ourselves all the way through. I need one more point. There we go. That's going to be my destination. And I'm just going to call it train. And then we're going to keep going. All right, right there. I'm going to stop recording. We're going to back up just a bit. And we're going to use the fun tools to set this up. So this one needs to come here. And then we're also going to create one that comes out here. Just in case for some reason I decide to circle back in, maybe pick up some seed or some fertilizer on the way, you never know. And then we're just going to send this guy back up to the farmyard. Now, I don't have it set up in a way that we can loop and do everything all on its own, mostly because, well, we don't have uh, a static leg. So the bin setup is always going to be changing with the augers being in different places, so... We'll just uh, semi-manually be running this truck back and forth, but at least I can send him up here to the uh, train station to get him unloaded. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get this uh, field boss out here. We're going to use this to uh, take the front of this ag bagger off. I'm pretty sure that's going to expose the crops and let me start trying to pull them out of there. We can figure out if that's going to be something I can do with an auger or not really quick-like. There we go. I should have uh, manual attach on here. Oops, did I get it hooked up? Yeah. Um, and then I think I just push Q. Oh no, I've got to come back here now. And disconnect the ag bag. Nice. And then let's pull this thing out of the way. Like so, we're just gonna, where am I gonna put this thing? I'm gonna roll it over here and store it on the side of the shed for the time being. I don't think I'm gonna need the field boss for anything else. I think since I've got this one going, I bet you if we hook up this other auger, 
not the soaring eagle. Oh, it's just going to jump me into the soaring eagle every time. There we go. I should be able to just back this thing into the end of this and hopefully load into my truck. Let's find out. Those beans are, or those peas are looking a little ripe. I did see the auger spin for a half second there. So I want to say it's all filled up. We'll come in here and take over for this semi. And we're going to send this back up to the train. When we're done, of course. Now, this one doesn't really matter which way I come in, but I think I'm going to come in this way so I can kind of get a straighter shot at that secondary auger. Um, I could obviously take out of the bins as well, but I kind of want to see how this is going to work out with the ag bag. So let's start with that because I'm super curious. It does not seem to be doing anything there. Nope, this doesn't seem to be doing what I'd hope. Oh, nope, there it is. Look at that. It's working, folks. There we go. Just got to get it in the right spot. You can see the ag bag shrinking. It's a little bit uh, unnatural. It's just how farm sim works that it uh, shrinks from the back instead of the front. But hey, this is working out really good. And I do have a... Uh, I had my uh, overlays turned on so I could see where the triggers were. We'll get those turned back off. And I'm just kind of curious to hop in here and make sure that we're actually pulling peas out of the bag. I didn't mess anything up with the script when I set it all up. Looking good. It's not the fastest uh, mechanism for unloading, but it does seem to be working. I think my auger was a little bit too high before, so we've lowered it down closer to the truck, and it looks like we're loading more consistently here. I was probably just on the edge of uh, a trigger or something like that from a depth perspective, so we're cranking through the beans now. Or the peas, I keep saying beans. It reminds me of the soybean texture just a little bit, but it's actually peas. So we'll get this back hopper filled up. It's a lot slower loading this way than it is out of the bin. That's all right. It's uh, it's working. And we had a storage problem when we were trying to figure out where all these peas were supposed to go. So this is working great. You know, one thing I could do to speed this up would be to uh, grab the grain cart and have that continue to unload while we're moving up to the other side of things so I'm gonna pop that off and we're gonna get that grain cart hooked up so I can finish emptying that bag while the semi is driving up to the fill point I don't think we're gonna have a lot of peas left in the bag after this but we're gonna have a few and we might as well optimize our time I don't think I'm gonna get this thing out of here without moving that versatile back out though well, we'll get that all fired up, let it warm up for a minute, and I think the peas are done loading, so let's get the semi heading back out here on the road. Uh, this is the one reason why I always come in the yard the other way. I don't think this is a two-way path through here. It is not, so I'm going to need to bring him back out to the main road for pointing this way at least. Get our covers on and all that good stuff. And here we go. We should be able to have him head up to the train yard and take care of that. Perfect. And let's see here if I can handle this guy. Back and out. We really need to give this thing a wash as well. We'll park it right over here. We'll get all this equipment washed up here as well at some point. But it can sit here for a little while while we're doing all of our crop work. And uh, let's see if I can get the rest of these peas out of the ag bag. I'm kind of curious if that ag bag is just going to disappear as soon as we pull the last of the crops out, or if it's going to, like, respawn into a pallet. I mean, the, I guess the wrap would get used up in real life, so I wouldn't expect there to be anything left once we get the rest of the peas out of it. So I expect it to just kind of go poof. Not much left in there now. 
There it is. Oh no, it does uh, despawn back into the ag bag so we can reuse it. Well, that's overly nice of them. I would not have uh, expected that. All right, you know what? So I think if I'm pulling in to load with that auger back there, we're going to put this one up here and we will drive under it first and we'll fill this part up before we head into the main part of the yard there. So I'm going to just park our grain car right about there. All right, we're coming back up into the yard here and hopefully this uh, path is going to work out for us. We haven't had a chance to test it yet, so this is our trial run. It's a nice tight turn, but no hang-ups. Looking good, looking good. It's definitely seeing the unload point. It took the tarps off. Whether or not I got far enough forward to unload the back hopper remains to be seen. But that's an easy enough fix if it does uh, happen to be a problem. Looks like we're getting it, though. I guess I have my hood off, don't I? Yep, we're unloading. No problemos. All right, I like it. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and send him back up to the farmyard. And we'll catch back up. I'll get the rest of our crops unloaded here. Uh, what's going on? Did we get hung up? I'm confused. Oh, there's probably nothing in here to actually unload. Um, instead of that, I need this. Yes, maybe. Go. No. Okay. Weirdness. All right, well, we've got him on the run now. Hopefully, this works out. All right, we are back up here at the farm, finally. And we'll go ahead and grab what we can out of this grain cart real quick. There we are. much faster than unloading from the auger directly. Uh, at least it feels like it now that I'm saying it. It's still going kind of slow. We're going to be swapping this grain cart out, I think, with uh, something here come harvest. And then I think we're actually going to upgrade our combine this harvest as well. Uh, or maybe just pick up a second one. I haven't decided yet, but it's definitely uh, the next piece of equipment ready for an upgrade here. So I got all the peas out of the grain cart. Let's go ahead and swing around here and see about loading up from the bin. Now, I've only taken one load out of the bin, so I know I've got a uh, whole load in there at least, if not a little bit more. So this will not be the last trip. We'll have one last trip after this one to uh, run up there to the train station. We had 52,000 liters left when I started filling the back section here, so that means we'll have right around, what, 20, 22,000 liters, something like that, left to go, so not even a full truck load, a one hopper load at uh, best. So we're almost there, folks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this up. We'll get the rest of the peas run up there, actually. And we'll check in when we're ready to get the train and start uh, selling these things off. I'm really curious to see what we're going to get from a precision farming bonus on top of uh, the uh, suggested or uh, predicted price in the menu that we're seeing with the easy price checker mod or whatever that's called. So I've got auto drive going here and we'll get this all delivered and we'll check back in in just a few minutes. All right, we loaded up the front hopper here with peas and I realized we've got an empty back hopper and not that many lentils. So we're going to go ahead and take the last of these uh, lentils up with us. They're also at a pretty high point and I might as well see if we can get everything sold on the same train here. Get a, a little bit uh, more bang for our buck driving back and forth to the elevator. So I'm going to get this all hauled up. This is our final load and we can finally sell some stuff and see what that's going to do for the old bank account. All right, there we go. I've got all the things unloaded into the elevator. So let me run across the road here and grab the train rental. 
I just saw it come by a minute ago, so this shouldn't take too long for it to make the circle back. Let's see, I've rented the train. Good deal. And somebody mentioned in one of my previous videos that I can actually back the train up and get to the edge of the map a little bit faster. So we're going to try that this time once it comes back around. So I'm just waiting for the train to come and we'll get it filled up here real quick and sell everything. All right, let's see. We've come a little bit too far forward with the train. This is the earliest I can apparently jump into it, though. So I'm going to grab this frontmost uh, compartment. We'll get it opened up. And we're going to start with the peas. We got plenty of uh, containers, though, so I'm not too worried about this. Well, let's just start with the lentils. That's what's there. There we go. And then uh, switch to the next compartment. There we go. I guess the uh, train engine counts as one of the cars. And there's our peas. Let's see how many of these we can get into a, a single uh, train car. Well, we've filled up one car. We're going to have to uh, open up the next one. That is uh, awesome. I don't know if I've had enough crop for more than one train car to get filled up, but we'll take it. That's a lot of crops for us. And these are all going to go get sold right out the gate here. If I double check, we have been hauling for quite a while. Both of these are still a pretty good price. The peas are, yep, doing good. It says we have 11,000 left. I think that's just uh, what we had in there. I can't see the lentil price anymore. And so, yep, if we come in here, now everything is out of our containers. I'm going to try this trick of backing it right back off of the map and see what happens. There we go. It's going to drive up to uh, sell those all off. Amazing. So we got a $49,000 bonus for precision farming. Awesome. And what's the other one going to be? Or is that both? Oh, that's both sets of crops all in one bill. Very nice. So we've got $380,000 to work with. And we no longer have the train rented. Perfect. It returns it as soon as we uh, send it on its way. Well, man, we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do with all that money. If we take just the quickest look here, I do have a significant loan out. But at the same time, we've also got a few leased items here. And those leases are starting to stack up. I could buy this for $254,000 uh, and really bring down our lease debt. But that lease to own, the leasing costs are going towards bringing those prices down. So... I don't know, maybe we'll just pay off some of the loan and keep the leases around for a while. I haven't decided yet. So let me know in the comments what you think we should do next. We are going to be uh, getting a combine upgrade here in the fall. So that's, uh, that's going to be something to keep our thoughts on as we decide where to spend our money. But for today, I think we're going to wrap things up here. And we'll catch you next time for, honestly, probably kicking off harvest. Unless I decide to do a few contracts. We'll see. That's all for today. Kedrick out. Let's be honest, I'm really doing this off camera so that uh, I don't have to explain myself every time I crash into a tree, which is about every 30 seconds doing the headlands. <laughs>